everyone good morning this video is a little bit emotional and i'm trying to hold myself so it's my coming out story <laughs> believe it or not i never had one because it was a rough very rough upbringing so when i was like age one everyone here was already different i was that child who <sighs> i was that child who would always put on lip balm put on saris wraps all over my body and just start dancing to indian music <sighs> Mom was always worried about, she always thought it was a phase, and I got to like six, seven. They would always send me out there. Send the, I was always bullied, I was always beaten up by the other kids, and they would push me out. <laughs> that IB, that's what they called me back home. IB, you're not gonna eat anything until you fight with this person if you don't fight there's no food for you and i'll cry sometimes i will be sick and i have to fight with the kids and they'll beat me up then that's when they give me in my meal for the day and it's when i was like eight nine mom called me today room after beating me up whipping me because back home they can whip you yeah whipped me and she called me she told me you're the only male child i have and you're the first child in this family we always have our puberty is always very intense and strong and it's been right for you to get baptized I come from, my hometown is Nigeria, West Africa. Um, I was born a Jehovah's Witness and I'm black. So it's like being discriminated on three different levels, being black, being a Jehovah's Witness and being from Africa. Oh my God. And uh, not being from Africa, but being gay and gender queer. So I was being discriminated on three different levels. So when I was like nine, mom was opened the Bible and showed me how being in love with the same gender would lead to destruction. And that fear was instilled in me from a very young age. From the age of six, I was already carrying a little briefcase to go from door to door to preach. Jehovah's word and every time I opened the Bible to preach to others, all I could think about was I'll be destroyed, I'll be crucified, and I'll go to the bedroom in the dark and start crying because all I could think about was I was gonna disgrace my family. I was I was always a disgrace and an abomination to the family. And mom never, ever think for a second or thought for a second that if I say these words to this child, I will destroy them somehow. She was the first person who would always say, oh no, you can never disgrace me. You can never ruin the legacy of my family which was being a Jehovah's Witness, which was always being perfect to the world and society, the immediate society we lived in. So when I was 12, I was already a baptized Jehovah's Witness, preaching door to door. I wished and prayed that I was different, that I could be cured of who I was and who I am. But oh, 
But I'm still the same person, and I was still the same person. Mom was so upset. She would tell her brothers to beat me up whenever, whatever chance they had. And they were so happy. They had to beat the gay away and pray the gay away from me. But it was still the same. I was always the same person. Then when I turned 16, I already had a boyfriend from when I was like 11 until I was 16. And my grand, my sister told my grandmother I was with a guy. Oh, my grandma came to the room of the person's house and saw us just in the room. We were doing nothing. She spit in my face and slapped me, dragged me to the house. And that was oh, so horrible and frustrating for a 16 year old. So, the families fought and quarreled on the st- in the street, and I was just mortified, abashed, and ridiculed all the time. It was bad enough that I was being beaten up and bullied by the kids, but adding my family to the mix every day. My name was changed from Ivy to Anus. Oh, back home we call it Tumo Nanju. Oh. At church I was always crying my mom while my mom was like, what an embarrassment you are. This is ridiculous. What a shame to my family name. You're an abomination. You die as you live a very short life and when you die, your blood will cleanse the family. Your blood will be used to cleanse the family of the family curse. You're the family curse. As in C-U-R-S-E. And I have always cried so much because I could not take it like I want. I almost committed suicide when I was 16 on my way from school. It was just too much. I wanted to, I almost fell off a bridge on a train track into the river and the lady saw me and she was like, I don't know where she came out from and she was like, what are you doing here? Keep moving, keep moving, don't go, what are you doing? And I jilted and I was like, oh my God, I was like, I almost lost my life. About three times I attempted suicide. The last time was when I was 18, I attempted suicide again. So, uh, I always said I was not going to do this video because I never had a coming out story and I didn't feel the need to tell anybody about my story because I'm a very private person. But after listening to so many things happening in the world today, I felt it's right I said something. And that's how my profile on YouTube came about. I had needed an avenue from college where I could express myself even if I was being taunted every day in the streets. And when I was like, mom had to take me away from when I was like 16 to when I was like 21-ish. But before that, within that bracket, because they didn't want me to keep destroying the family name. So when I was 18, a guy accused me of touching him inappropriately. And I was like, no, because I was already going through a lot. And I wanted to still be the perfect child that everyone wanted in the family. And mom could not take it. When this kid said that, she was like, I I woke up 6 a.m. in the morning to my mom and her brothers with woods and planks. (sighs) It's really sad because I was beaten from 6 a.m. to about 2 p.m. 
they kept beating me so I have a lot of scars in my hair so that's why I had to grow it out and my back I also have the scars too to. it was a sad experience I they had to use hot water to burn my backside in order to heal me and cure the homosexuality out of my body repeatedly I was bashed with the planks and they were punching me and everything my mom her brothers Hope Joseph Tam Naomi like ah. then after that they stripped me naked and pushed me out in the streets and everyone was just spitting and just screaming Tumo Nonjo Anusaka TB and homo 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 Ooh, I was crying I was publicly disgraced and after that I knew that growing up I have never had a family but that confirmed that the last person I trusted in this world that's my mom could and her family could do that to me I knew that I had to create my own family when I left the house so after that I left the house and I never looked back when I was 21 I got a scholarship to study overseas and I knew I was never going back and no one even knew about the scholarship because I never told anyone until the night I was leaving and my grandmom slapped my face she was like so you're trying to escape but there was nothing she could do and that's how I left I was like I left for Malaysia and when I went to Malaysia, I thought it was going to get better, but I found that it was a Muslim country, and that was a whole different level. People were beating me on the streets, throwing can beer can bottles at me when I was going to school. If I put on white and white, oh, faggot, that was my name. I was called faggot, CC, alien, homo, tumonanjo, ass soccer. Every I've heard it all, and I said to myself, Daniel, You've, they've called you all these names and you've called yourself all these names and you've accepted every one of them. Now you have to learn to love yourself rather than trying to commit another suicide. You have to keep, try and live for yourself and create your own family. Fortunately, after my studies in Malaysia, which was, I was always depressed and sad and always in tears. I came to the States in 2011 to seek asylum. So that's how I got to the States. So during my stay, it took about two years. I kept telling, going to meet with my lawyers to tell them about my story. And every time we had a meeting, I was crying every time. And that's why I'm trying to hold myself back because I'm tired of crying. I've cried so much that my eyeballs are always hurting when I cry and I can't do that anymore. Like, it's not. And I've been picking up the pieces ever since. At some point I said, does it really get better? I don't know. Because ever since I've been growing up, it's always getting worse and worse. But now, it's a little bit better, I would say. I'm not attacked on the streets and beaten all the time. I'm not called faggots all the time, so yeah, it got a little bit better. But now I've just been struggling to make a living for myself. And then I moved to Boston where I seek my asylum. And when it comes to the dating world, um, my therapist said I may be having what they call detachment from society. That because of what I've been through growing up, I've been alienated emotionally and I'm always scared uh, that it would take a while for me to get back myself and be able to really you know, fall in love again but it's been a journey because I remember in Malaysia even the boyfriend I had was on the deal and whenever he saw me with his friends on the streets they would laugh at me and they called me alien and 
when I was in the class, no one could sit close to me. Once I sit down, everyone leaves the seat and sit elsewhere. When my name is called, everyone starts laughing. They like they called me the Joker. People could not if people could not even stand close to me. I was repulsive. I was I was the alien until I got a friend, Fimbi, who was like me too. And that was what helped me too in my college days. But I've been in Boston for a while. Someone tried to go out with ask me out. He was on the older side and he said to me, you should be happy that I'm trying to go out with you because you're from Africa. And I was like, excuse me? So because I'm from Africa and I've gone through so much, I should accept anything and everything. I should not have any standards. And every time they're like, you started from nothing. You started from nothing and it reminded me of my past and I've always tried to forget about my past because I know it's so hurtful when I really think about it. And when the lights are shut off in the dark, I'm always crying. And I'm tired of crying. So I'm doing this video just for anyone out there that is having any difficulty. It may not get all the way better. But somehow you have to make it better for yourself. You have to. I've had incidents in Malaysia where I was beaten by people on the streets, taxi drivers, and I was... I had to go to the police and they asked me if I was a male or a female and if I was Christian or a Muslim. And when I said I was not a Muslim, I was sent away. So I had to have swollen face and go to school with bruises on my face. My friend had to take me. He was crying. He was like, I can't believe you went through this. So, yeah, I'm just taking it one step at a time. And I'm trying to make sure that I don't get used because I tend to be in situations where I'm always used and it's like I love being punished. It's like I have to keep paying for being who I am. So I have to overcompensate. So I promised myself that I'm not going to cry. Not do this. I never wanted to do this video because I never had a coming out story. From the age of one, I knew who I was and I was always beaten for that. Anyone coming out, anyone out there is going through this. I went through any similar situation. If you're going through any similar situation, please don't commit suicide. The world needs you. I don't know where I would be if I was dead at 16. I don't. I won't be here today. I won't be a hairstylist today. I won't be an author. In my novel, when people read it, they were like, who is this person? We just want to hug you. And I was like, I don't want to be vulnerable. I don't want to be. I'm tired of it. I'm tired. just want to be happy. I really do. That's why I have to keep working hard. Huh? So I can get to a point where I can have a place of my own. I say, yeah, Savi, I be. Daniel, you're what it, and the world needs you, and you're not an abomination, you're not an alien. I've given up so much just to be alive. It's not fair. I never did anything wrong to be who I am, to be born this way. I've loved myself. Now I'm just accepting my scars and everything that comes with it. Anyway, my liars have watched me cry so much and I'm so tired. I promised myself not to cry ever again, but it's hard when it is. Well, I love you guys. Hopefully this story helps anyone out there. It may get better. It doesn't get better all the time, but you just have to keep it moving, okay? I love you all.
Oh, and please take care of yourself. If you guys have any questions about how to live or just anything about if you're going through some less stuff, just send me an email. I'm always there for you guys. Okay. Love you. Oh, I never knew I was gonna do this video because I promised myself not to do it. If you notice, I've had so many videos and I just stood out of this because I never had a coming out story. I don't want to be celebrating. I just want to help someone out there. Okay? Love you all. Bye.